Dumaan ako sa EDSA kanina. Oo. At nakita ko yung word, never again <laughs> to dictatorship. Alam po ba ninyo mga kabansa? Sino ba ang dictatorship? Sino ba ang dictator? Ang pinaparingan nila dyan ay si Marcos the first, no? And I will strike this from the viewpoint of legitimacy. Si Presidente Marcos po declared martial law on the basis of Article 7, Section 11, Subsection 2, Provision of the Philippine Constitution of the Philippines, no? Hindi ko nababasahin yung ano, mm -hmm. pero nandyan yan. Ha? Or he may suspend the privileges of writ of habeas corpus or place the Philippines or any part thereof under martial law. It was a constitutional act and legal act, the motivation and, of which has been misguided by the noisy opposition party na sabi, para extend daw yung term ni Mako. Hindi po. Kumakatok na ang mga komunista sa pintuan. At saka, ng, pag nababasa ko nga yung mga kolumnista na nag Please be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station, the management, and its network. Okay. Dito na po tayo sa second half ng ating diskusyon, itong petsya ng uh, Abayn 5 ng Pebrero, uh, starting with the situation uh, in Ukraine and Russia, uh, and now moving on to the experience of the Philippines sa mga regime change, you know. Uh, EDSA 1 and U.S. election meddling today, you know, continuing all these decades. Uh, but let's just first start with EDSA 1. Ano bang EDSA 1? Yan po ay gawa din ng mga Amerikano. Tulad doon sa 1980s pa, no, yung Solidarnosc sa Poland. Mm -hmm. yeah. ano? uh, ang, uh, ang Vatican ay aktibo naman dyan sa Solidarnosc. Ano, most, many of young, the young people mm -hmm. didn't even encounter that anymore. No, no, no. Si Tony Ka, Kaana. Uh, Maestro Ado, do you recall Solidarnosc? Uh, uh, and uh, yung mga protesta ng workers, Gdansk, uh, ano? Uh, and uh, Lech Walesa, remember oh. those names? Yung, yung mga ginamit ng mga Amerikano to depose the uh, socialist government of, at that time. No? Then, of course, uh, Tiananmen was also an operation of the uh, CIA, you know. Kasama siyempre yung mga domestic assets nila sa China. Mm -hmm. And of course, Maidan, which we just discussed in Ukraine in 2014. And the uh, Philippines had one of the earliest regime change operations, no? And that was uh, yung pag, uh, papatalsik kay Presidente Marcos in 1986, which was prepared 10 years before, you know, and... Uh, Ito nga ang uh, independent uh, view, an American view of what happened noong 1986 sa uh, EDSA Uno or People Power, Yellow uh, Color Revolution, uh, Yellow Revolution People Power. Si Mike Billington po, uh, our friend in the United States, uh, Virginia, kilala din ni po ni Ka uh, Ado yan, and maybe we can ask him to contribute uh, some uh, thoughts here. Ang pamagat na sinulat ni Mike Billington, Schultz and the Hitmen, destroyed the Philippines. Ano? Schultz and the hitmen destroyed the Philippines. Sinasalaysay po dito yung ilang mga taon na pressure kay Marcos, financial pressure, na pinayagan ng Amerikano at the very least to happen mm -hmm. because they sent him out of the United States, forced him back to the Philippines, ano? where he was assassinated by, up to this day, nobody knows who masterminded it. No? Yan. Wala pa rin. It's a, but, it's a, ano, it's yeah. a $1 million question. Yeah, baka $1 billion question <laughs> dapat yan. Uh, but today, people have changed their views about EDSA Uno. Mm -hmm. ano, even Cardinal Sin, one of the major architects of EDSA Uno, People Power, Yellow Power. Ano, Cardinal Sin's nephew supports Marcos Jr. call for unity. Ano, sabi dito, asked why he joined Marcos's Partido Federal ng Pilipinas, La Chica, ayun po ang apelido ng pamangkin na ngayon ni... Uh, the Cardinal Sin, si Calibo Mayor William La Chica, said he and his family began to compare the past uh, from what was happening and slowly realized the folly of the political elite's power grab, ayun, mm. at least in at least niya, in uh, uh, when they saw the country deteriorating because of failed leadership and unbridled bureaucratic shenanigans. Now, talking now about election uh, meddling by the United States, no? this goes back 
to the time of the grant of the independence, ano, uh, post-war mm -hmm. uh, Philippines when MacArthur uh, engineered the rehabilitation of uh, Japanese collaborator Manuel Rojas kasi body-body niya, gusto niya yan ang maging presidente at hindi si Sergio Osmeña Sr. Ano? Mm -hmm. So, with the uh, sugar barons, uh, yung sugar block na natatawag, uh, pinagtulungan nila at nalagay po pagka-presidente si Manuel Rojas. Nung namatay po ito, nag-take over si Presidente Quirino. Si Presidente Quirino nagsimula po doon sa Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, si Mike Cuaderno, ng uh, Currency and Capital Controls, uh, beginnings lang. No? Mm -hmm. Nag-full bloom yan nung Filipino First Policy ni mm -hmm. Presidente Garcia. Uh, around 6-7 uh, years later but we'll go into that very quickly ito po ang ebidensya naman nung Quirino versus Magsaysay the Americans uh, Edward Lansdale CIA agent uh, Colonel Lansdale was uh, supporting Magsaysay because Quirino had a uh, nationalist policy uh, ito po from the um, study among many studies that I can cite but I am just uh, picking this from the Philippine studies which is archived in the uh, Ateneo Library you know written by Nakano Satoshi. Sabi dito, by the time K-Plan, another CIA agent was assigned to the Philippines, Lansdale and other American officials had already labeled President Quirino as hopeless, blah, 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 uh, and uh, uh, set up a political maneuver to get Ramon Magsaysay elected as president in 1950, in the 1953 general elections. You know? Para magkaroon po sila ng counterfoil to the Quirino government, nagtayo sila ng Ramfrel. Making the 1951 uh, mid-year election free and honest, sabi ng mga Amerikano, was the first step in the plot. Since the election day was set for November 13, the National Movement for Free Elections, Ramfrel, the name you should all know by now, the National Movement for Free Elections was inaugurated in August 1951 as a civic organization headed by Jimmy Ferrer or Jaime Ferrer, then 35-year-old national commander of the Philippine Veterans Legion, the organization was secretly financed by the CIA. Uh, now this is only one of many studies of the, uh, this historical fact. Namfrel was created by the CIA. Uh, no? And we know the role of Namfrel in the manipulation of perception of elections and in the uh, sabotage of elections itself. It's uh, uh, 2016, I think. Thank you, Kai uh, Thinking Pinoy, for monitoring this. Namfrel's website went down, ano, November, uh, June 19, ano, and um, website continue, uh, con conveniently went down several hours after it was found out that one of the National Council members is the president and CEO of the firm that provides IT to one Sambayan. Ano. Uh, I think this was uh, 20, 2016, ba? Elections. Mm -hmm. no? Elections. Oh. But anyway, we have more evidence of that. Now, uh, American involvement and meddling is still here. Uh, again, this surfaced when uh, Rappler and Comelec signed a deal. Today? Uh, uh, today ang signing. Kahapon uh, nato, uh, today. Na ang Rappler daw ay magpo-provide ng voter education. Kahapon. Uh, uh, ano, kahapon. Uh, Rappler will, will help Comelec in fighting voters' disinformation. Mm, kaya nga, voter education din oh, yan, disinformation. In a way, oh. of all. Well, marami nang nag, uh, react po dyan negatively at uh, one of them, of course, is uh, si um, Malu Tequia, a columnist of the Manila Times and a political activist din. Ano? Sabi ni Malu Tequia, bakit kayo, Comelec, makikipag-deal dito kay hmm. Rappler? Rappler mm -hmm. has a pending case on appeal, Rappler has not paid correct taxes. Precisely. As the SEC has revoked Rappler's registration. License. Uh, no? And license, no? Uh, Rappler is the least trusted media organization Precisely. according to surveys. Ano? It has catered to its bias and dished out its share of misinformation and disinformation from survey results to stories twisted and articles with factual errors. Well, ang reaction ko dyan, pera ng foreigners coming in through Rappler, and merong ibang mga nakakita po niyan doon sa common, like we don't know yet whom, there should be an inv investigation of this. Mm -hmm. This has been noted also by the National Press Club, led, led by uh, President uh, Paul, uh, mm -hmm. Paul uh, Gutierrez, Gutierrez ano, who sent us immediately upon uh, his issuing of the statement, yung kanang uh, protesta mm -hmm. tungkol dito sa deal na to. Ano, ito po ang uh, facsimile. Yung, yeah. Yan, yan po ang 
sulat ni ng National Press Club. Ito po ang report naman ng Manila Times about this protest. National Press Club protests Comelec partnership with Rappler. Uh, it's a February 24 report. Can we take a look at that? Uh, to show that it is now circulating uh, in our media. No? Mm. National Press Club protests Comelec's partnership with Rappler. In the meanwhile, more are coming in, more information about U.S. meddling embassy. U.S. Embassy coordinating with Comelec on sending of poll observers. Ayan naman, ang ulat from GMA News Online. Yung susunod na ipapakita po sa screen ninyo. No? Ayan, U.S. Embassy coordinating with Comelec on sending of poll observers. Two points lang. Number one, on uh, media, on, on uh, voter education and combating disinformation, it should be the government media. Mm -hmm. RP1, PTB4, Yay. Philippine News Agency. Mm -hmm. Ano? Doing that, mm -hmm. ano, para may kapisanan uh, karen naman. Na kapisanan ng uh, uh, KBP, you no know, broadcasters ng Pilipinas yes. and so many other. But why Rappler? Because Rappler has some money from the Western powers, from the United States, you know. And uh, so U.S. Embassy is active. We'll show why we should not be dealing with the U.S. Embassy on these. For example, uh, um, in Hung Hungary, or of course in, in in Russia too, and many other countries. Uh, nakikita ang kamay na ni George Soros uh, mm. here from France 24 na report from Hungary. Soros tries to influence election campaigns, Hungarian minister says. And we know George Soros has been giving money to Rappler mm. aside from the National Endowment for Democracy. And, open uh, Society Institute. Uh, open Society Institute ni George Soros. Mm. And ito naman ay uh, one of the uh, global uh, institutions or foundations on election meddling. Of course, they hide it under the name of International Foundation for Electoral Systems. Ayan po, no? International Election Observation and Campaign Finance. So, they're you know, financing. Uh, uh, the, 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 for example, they describe participants agreed on an expen expansive role for domestic regulators and watchdogs. For example, sino ang domestic regulators and watchdogs? Comelec is one. Namfrel is another, no, no and friend. media, uh, the si Rappler, yeah, kaya po napapasok dyan. Fact si, checker sa FB. Uh, right? Yun, fact checker sa FB. Vera file. Sino ang funder ng ano, International Foundation for Electoral Systems? Well, nandito sa kanan. Below is a selection of some of IFES's generous donors. U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, mm. U.S. Department of State. Mm. Uh, so, political USAID. po yan. Uh, so, yan ang, yan ang isang background po. Ano? And, uh, let, so, let's go to to Kaado and then Kaana on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Ikaw, Kaana, what are your Ako naman, ang reaction, reaction ko, ano-ano yung ano, first doon sa Rappler, how can Comelec partner with ano, uh, an entity na hindi na sa walang legal, ano, mm -hmm. walang legal na, ano, na personality? Person, yeah. Kasi revoke na yung kanyang license. Mm -hmm. So parang nakikipag-usap siya sa, sa isang vlog site? Mm -hmm. Yan yung problema doon. Tapos, least trusted ng mga Filipino. So, how can you possibly ano, partner with someone like that? Ang tanong ko, eh, ipabato ko sa Comelec. Mm. Kasi sila nakikipag-partner eh, mm. na marami namang pwedeng pagpilian. Yung isa naman, yung tawag nito, yung sa meddling ng US, andito na naman sila. Mm. Hindi talaga sila tumitigil. Kahit sa ang parte ng mundo, eh, gusto nilang makialam. ba? Wala namang nag invite sa kanilang mag-observe dito eh. Well, diba? Yes. Bakit nandito sila? I don't even think it's about observing. No? It's about other things na gagawin nila. Which is, ang tanong ko dito, papayag pa ba ang mga Pinoy sa ganito? Yeah. I think we should not allow this. We should voice it out and tell, no, tell them na, Oy, this is not okay. We don't accept this. No? It has to be, you know, Filipinos should voice it out. No? Yeah. Kado, maestro? Well, from the patterns, from the dark patterns, sino ba ang nag-finance at nag-operate ng mga insurgency forces doon sa Ukraine? Di ba Umidya Network? Oh, mm, precisely. Umidyar. Sino ba ang funder ng Rappler? Umidya. Oh, oh, precisely. Ang, 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 oh, ano, sino ang support ng uh, Umidya Network? Soros Open Society mm, Foundation. Foundation or Institute. Oh. Okay. Now, Ano isang project ng Soros? Itong Smartmatic. Ang, ang chairman, ang CEO ng Smartmatic noong 2015 na pumunta dito for the 2016 election, 
was Lord Mark Malok Brown. Asa na si Lord Mark Malok Brown ngayon? Nasa Soros Open Society Foundation na po. From being chairman and CEO of Smartmatic, siya na ngayon ang presidente. At tao niya ang nasa iniwan niya sa Smartmatic. Alam na alam natin from the mouth of Maria Reza alone, na itatago natin sa pangalang Rappler, 4.5 million. Ang alam ko, 1, 1, uh, 1 million lang eh, to 1.5 million dollars lang eh. Pero doon sa forum abroad, na nasa video kung saan chinalance ng isang uh, freelancer, si Maria Reza, sa kanyang bibig mismo nang galing 4.5 million dollars po ang natanggap. At lately, just this uh, a few months ago, tumanggap na naman sila ng loan from Soros Open Society Foundation of 100,000 na si Lord Mark Malok Brown na ang presidente. Baba tayo. Hindi ba sila ang fact verifier? Yes. Ng, uh, ng Facebook. Facebook. Hindi ba Bira Piles? Eh, Bira Piles po, supportado at funded by National Endowment for Democracy. Democracy. Ngayon ito, ang tanong ko dito sa mga election watchdog na ito. Dahil pag nanalo po yung kanilang kandidato kasi, the election is clean, transparent and honest. Pag natalo, it's marred by irregularities and perhaps violence and manipulation. So, Win-win na naman kung sino itong mga ito. Isang bansa lang po lahat ang commonality rito. United States of America. Now, I'm not saying that it's the people of the U.S. Ayaw din nila ito. Nagiging biktima na rin sila ngayon ito dahil pinapasok nila ang smartmatic sa kanilang sistema. Ito pong gobyerno na administrasyon ni Biden, bantayan yung mabuti. No? At saka, tapanggit niyo yung word na nationalist. No? Mm. Uh, hindi ko na ngayon ginagamit yan kasi misunderstood eh. Uh, often. Ang sinasabi ko na lang is national interest. Ayan. National Ayan. interest po. Kung sinong may hawak ng ating national mm. interest. Kaya kabubuti ng mas marami, lalo na ng mga mahihirap. Ha? Huwag natin silang iwanan sa laylayan. No? By the way, ayaw na raw nila yung ano, maging nanay, yung <laughs> nag-invento nag ng word na may layan. Iba na raw ang tatay ano nila. Eh, hindi na ako pupunta raw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tawag nito, na, alam mo yun, yung parang ano ba, gusto nyo ba kaming gawing Ukraine? Hmm. Oh, Umpisa okay. nyo sa eleksyon namin, magkakagulo ang Pilipinas, syempre. And then what else? <laughs> you will uh, what? You will come here, yes. and you will say, we'll sending ano, peacekeeping troops in the Philippines. Okay. Ganon, ang gusto nilang gawin sa atin. I think the Filipinos has to wake up this time yeah. around. Huwag right. payagan yung ganito. No? Hindi to, ano, we need to take hold of our own country, no? and let's yeah. not By the way, ano, dumanong, allow these foreigners to interfere in our own domestic affairs. Duman ako sa EDSA kanina, oh. at nakita ko yung word, never again! <laughs> to dictatorship. Alam po ba ninyo mga kabansa? Sino ba ang dictatorship? Sino ba ang dictator? Ang pinaparinggan nila dyan ay si Marcos the First, no? And I will strike this from the viewpoint of legitimacy. Si Presidente Marcos po declared martial law on the basis of Article 7, Section 11, Subsection 2, Provision of the Philippine Constitution of the Philippines, no? Hindi ko na babasahin yung ano, mm -hmm. pero nandyan yan. Ha? Or he may suspend the privileges of writ of habeas corpus or praise the Philippines or any part thereof under martial law. It was a constitutional act and legal act, the motivation and, of which has been misguided by the noisy opposition party na sabi para extend daw yung term ni Mako. Hindi po. Kumakatok na ang mga komunista sa pintuan. At saka, ng, pag nababasa ko nga nila. yung mga kolumnista na nag-justify nung Ed Zawan and so on, uh, malupit daw si Marcos and so on. Ang sagot ko lang eh, remember Plaza Miranda? Sinong nagpabomba niyan? Yeah. Mm, precisely. Uh, kol uh, collaboration of Ninoy and uh, Joe Masison para magpasabog. Mm. May namatay na bata po roon. Para din maging dahilan 
sa paninira at pagwawasak kay Presidente Marcos. Tanungin nila si Nonoy Sunyiga kung paano siya nagbawasak ng isang paa. Yan naman, may collaboration ng Amerikano oh, yan because yeah. I know those light a fire movement. Mm -hmm. Komadre ko po, yung isang kasama dyan, si Doris Baffrey, uh, Doris Nuval. Ano, and uh, uh, we're not, I, I'm not sure right now kung sino nag-plant uh, ng bomb sa Hyatt uh, Hotel mo yun, <coughs> Kaado? Or oh. in Intercon? When was yung nasabugan si... Uh, parang Hyatt eh, parang Hyatt Hotel eh. You know, it's so long ago. So long uh, ago? Uh, oh. Pero baka, yung mga sila... Baka Philippine Plaza. I'm, I'm, oh, anyway... Uh, Philippine Plaza was the tourism uh, agency, yung international tourism uh, oh. ano, airline group. Ano? Oh, si Dosis Buffy ang naglagay ng bomba na yun. Uh, so this were well, uh, 1970s yet pa ba yan? Ano? Uh, uh, yeah. Pero nababasa Pero, ko na, narinig ko sa inyo. Ang nakalimutan ng mga ito, hindi na nila binabanggit na miski may marshalo, tinuloy ni Marcos yung fruits, yung yung draft po ng 1973 well, na, constitution. Well, nagtawag na siya ng uh, ano eh, di ba? Yung... Uh, uh, Rebisit. Uh, hindi, hindi. Yung uh, constitutional so, convention. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, 320 CONCON so, delegates sila met through their president, former just, uh, president Justado mm -hmm. Makapagal, kay Marcos yung draft. At in-enforce ni Marcos po yung bata sa pangbansa. Mm -hmm. Nagkaroon ng eleksyon noong 1978. Kaya tumakbo pa si Nino Yakino. Kaya hindi ko maintindihan bakit sino shortcut nila yun. On the other hand, ano po ang dictatorship na diniklara ni Cory? Mm. At bakit wala nagtatalo kundi dyan? Hindi, walang base. She declared Pinatay nga niya yung 1973 Constitution. Mm. She declared a revolutionary, revolutionary government. government. Yon. Which is a completely arbitrary process. Mm. Oh, yun so, so, ang one-man rule. Oh, kasi sa kanya lahat ang powers eh. One woman rule oh, pala. One woman correction. rule. Oh. Sa kanya lahat. One Majungeras eh. rule. Majungeras. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, Majungeras pala siya. Oh, 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 yeah. Ah, well, okay, let okay. me also again go back. So, I was na narrating yung Kirino government transition to Magsaysay uh, uh, because of uh, the Namfrel then and uh, Edward Lansdale. Pero yung paninira naman ng uh, uh, oligarch-owned media, sugar-block-owned sugar media, and American-owned media, yung mga Sorianos, oh. mga Amerikanos yan, no? uh, was the Golden Orinola. Mm. Ano, so, napaniwala ang maraming tao. Sobrang luho naman nitong si Quirino, ginto pa ang kanyang Orinola. And so, but in 2014, so many decades later, uh, ni-reveal ni Francisco Quitatad sa kanyang column sa Manila Times, na na-interview niya itong nagsulat ng storya nitong Golden Orinola si Celso Cabrera na inamin ni Celso Cabrera gawa-gawa gawa -gawa niya na. dahil utos from above he was writing for the Chronicle which was owned by Lopez. the Lopez's Lopez, of the Sugar yeah. Block uh -oh. ano ang Sugar Block naman sustentado ng uh -huh. American, American market yan no. At saka, yeah. mm. kung titignan mo, ginawa nila yan sa panahon ni Duterte. Anong mm. ginamit nila? Human rights, human rights, yeah, human yeah, rights, no. war on drugs. War on Ang drugs, problem, AJK. AJK. Ginamit nila yan uh, eh. To, dictator oh, daw. Dictator, mga bababla. Kasi akala nila, eh, the same pa rin ang mm. Pilipino. Mm. Hindi, eh, kaso mulat ang Pinoy na eh. Yeah. So wala silang nagawa. Saka may social media na. Kumakalat kahit mm. papano, at, kahit na fina-fact-check na mali oh, ni... Oh, real-time ang discussion. Ni Ellen Tordesillas at oh. ni Maria Nessa. Saka, let's face it, nakuha rin naman nilang majority for a while. Mm. Eh, marami na namatay doon. Mm. So, pumalit na yung mga bago, walang informasyon, saan nag-check? Sa social media. Mm. At doon nakita. Oh, kasi real time ang ano dyan eh, ang, ang discussion eh. Duyan. So in this last minute of our discussion, I just want to make an appeal. Maybe we might be initiating, maybe others will initiate action against this Comelec Rappler deal and against the U.S. Embassy uh, observ observers that they will be sending in the uh, coming election. election. You know? So maybe we will take physical action, meaning demonstration, oh. pickets, rallies. Ang tanong ko, what if, like for example, Russia and China would also send, send observers? observers. Hindi kaya bu oh. ano, tatambling yung mga pinklawan oh, yeah, ng sobra-sobra at yeah. magre Ngayon tahimik sila. Mm. Oh. Why not, di ba? That's if, right. No. Oh, Tsaka, why didn't do this as well? Tinapan ka nila ngayon diba? ang simbahan mm. at mga so-called ecclesial movements mm. ng malabasa, katulad mm. ng Couples for Christ, Ayun, which no. I was a 
November before. <laughs> eh, hindi na po ecclesial movements to mga ito. They are, have now become partisan and secular. Oh. oh. Kaya... Hindi na siya couples for Christ. Hindi, partisan hindi, couples for Christ. Hindi ko nasama yung litrato ng simbahan na may poster ni... Oh, Lenin oh isa pa yun. My God, church, oh. may poster. Sa Union yun, Rally. Ano yun, rally? Ay, ano, naman. campaign? Well, let's hope uh, we can uh, really <laughs> fix uh, our 2022 presidential elections and have the will of the people really uh, uh, reign supreme. Reign supreme, ano? yes. So, uh, we'll have to say goodbye uh, at this time. Makaado. Yes. Uh, ang ano ko lang sa ating mga kababayan, maging maalam at maging maingat <laughs> at magkaroon po tayo ng sarili nating mga um, pagsasaliksik ng mga informa information na ating na ihaharap sa atin para po malaman natin ang katotohanan po. Magandang ang um, araw sa ating And lahat. Maestro Ado, in his beautiful age? Uh, Nandiyan na po ang <laughs> PPCRB. Hindi na kailangan ng mga simbahan katoliko sa ano pa mga aspeto. At ang aking tinideklara ko po sa sambayanan na ang aking Redeemer ay si Jesus Christ at hindi ang kandidato ng Couples for Christ. <laughs> Okay, maraming salamat po and see you again next week. <laughs>